The play Chitra is otherwise known as Chitrangada. It is a one act play. The important characters of this play are Chitra, Arjuna, Madana, Vasanta and villages. Here Chitra is the daughter of the king of Manipur. Arjuna is a hermit. He is of the Kshatriya or warrior caste. He is the prince of the house of Gurus. Madana is a god, the lord of love. And Vasanda is also a god, the king of seasons. The play Chitra has nine scenes. In scene one, Chitra falls in love with Arjuna but is rejected by him. So, she entreats the gods for the gift of beauty to attract Arjuna. In scene two, Arjuna falls in love with Chitra but Chitra rejects it. In scene three, we can see the delicious union of Arjuna and Chitra and Vasanda's advice too. In scene four, the physical enjoyment of the lovers comes to a close. In scene 5, the gift of beauty granted by gods to Chitra for one year draws to a close. In scene 6, we see Chitra expresses her disinclination for a domestic life to Arjuna. In scene 7, Chitra expresses her last wish to Arjuna. In scene 8, the plight of the villagers and the Arjuna's decisions are mentioned. And in scene 9, Chitra's confessions are expressed. Now let us see the summary of the play Chitra. Chitra is the daughter of the king of Manipur. His name is Chitravahana. Her parents had no male child, so they brought her up as a boy. She was taught all the martial arts. She always appeared in male attire. She had no feminine grace or softness. One day, walking about a forest, she stumbled on a young man sleeping on dried leaves. She asked him to move aside. He was proud and did not get up. Then she pricked him contemptuously with the sharp end of her bow. He leapt up at once like a tongue of fire. He gazed at her for some time. Probably he was puzzled by her male dress and male look. He said that he was Arjuna of the great Kuru clan. Chitra was petrified. She was standing before a great warrior. It had been her ambition to fight against him. But now she was not in a mood to fight. Her romantic desire was roused. She fell in love with him. But Arjuna said that he had vowed to remain a celibate for 12 years. He also felt that he was not fit to marry her. Now Chitra leaves that place. She requests Madana, the god of love, to make her superbly beautiful at least for one day so that she can attract Arjuna. Vasanta, the friend of Madana, takes pity on her and assures her that she can enjoy feminine grace and charm for one full year. In the meantime, Arjuna recalls Chitra appearing on the brink of a lake with all her newly acquired feminine charms. He recalls how she finally veiled her body and walked away with a sad look on her face. Arjuna fell at once in love with her. The sight of her beautiful body gave him the supreme fulfillment of desire. In the second meeting between Chitra and Arjuna, without identifying Arjuna, Chitra tells him that she comes to the temple of Shiva often to fulfill her desire. After much pressure, she tells him that she has fallen in love with Arjuna. Now Arjuna reveals his identity to her and says that he has broken his vow of celibacy because he has found in her the wealth of the world, the end of all poverty, the goal of all efforts, the one woman. Chitra is shocked at his abandoning his vow. Then comes the third scene. In the third scene, the delicious union of Arjuna and Chitra happens. Lulled by the soft southern breeze, she was sleeping in the moldy bower. Suddenly, she felt fiery eyes gazing at her. She woke up and saw Arjuna before her. The two embraced each other and had sex. She woke up the next morning and probably overcome by shame, ran away from the spot. 
then chitra meets god madana and explains that she does not like arjuna's love because it is based on mere physical attraction she does not like having to duck her body every day and sending it to arjuna to get it caressed by him she asks madana to take back the physical beauty which he has gifted to her vasanda asks her to wait patiently till arjuna having had his fill of physical pleasure will be reconciled with her natural plainness and male look now the one year period vasanda allowed chitra to flaunt her feminine charm is drawing to a close chitra hints that their physical enjoyment centering around her beauty will soon end arjuna is unable to digest this he asks chitra whether she has a home of her own he probably wants to know indirectly if she is inclined to lead a domestic life chitra expresses her disinclination for a domestic life indirectly by telling him that it is vain to try to catch the tints of the cloud the dance of the waves and the smell of the clouds she urges arjuna to enjoy her as much as he can before the year comes to an end now the last day of the year has come chitra requests madana to make her beauty burn brightest in the last hour that night like the final flicker of a dying flame during this time the villagers report to arjuna that they are in danger of being attacked by robbers from whom only princess chitra can save them they complain that she is not found anywhere arjuna does not know that princess chitra and chitra are one and the same person he tells chitra that he would like to give up his sensual dalliance and undertake the manly task of routing the robbers chitra goes on to say that she too can rise above womanly volumptuous and act in a manly manner and help him in his life as a warrior arjuna is mystified by her talk chitra breaking into tears not knowing whether to resume her life as a warrior or settle down to a conventional wifely role accepting male domination finally in the last scene chitra reveals her identity to arjuna she reminds him how he rejected her when she appeared before him in male exterior and how in order to attract him she later got her beauty and charm as a gift from the gods she confesses that the period of her borrowed beauty is over she tells him that she is pregnant if a son be born to her she promises to teach him all the martial arts that she has learned and rear him as a second arjuna she assures him that she can stand by his side in the path of danger and daring arjuna is happy at this prospect he says that his life is full with these words the play comes to an end now let us see the critical analysis of the play at first we are going to discuss about the symbolism in the play chitra in this play madana and vasanda are symbols madana or manmada symbolizes love and vasanda symbolizes spring season the fact that they always appear together symbolizes the fact that love and spring go together on the last day of the stipulated one year period vasanda tells chitra that the white glow of her skin and the redness of her lips will be born in jasmine flowers and ashoka leaves respectively here the jivatma paramatma cycle is hindered here vasanda the friend of madana is a personification of spring it represents the eternal youth the word gem used by arjuna in the sixth scene of the play symbolizes chitra in this play we can find many poetic touches the description of arjuna's physical union with chitra is couched in poetry it is compared to the merging of night and day pain and pleasure death and life heaven and earth time and space etc the physical features of chitra are touched upon reticently in this context arjuna's tribute to chitra as the one woman embodying all admirable features is another vivid poetic touch another comparison we can find in this play is chitra compares arjuna's unsatisfied desire to the thirst of the bee that goes to flowers 
again and again to get honey. Again we can find some more comparisons in the play. Chitra compares herself to a tall mounted fir. She is compared by Arjuna to the lioness. Arjuna described Chitra as the desire of the world. Again we can find that Chitra is like a magic deer running free and untouched. In this play, Tagore has used illusion and reality too. Chitra's appearance as a charming lady is an illusion here. Chitra prayed to Madana and Vasanda. At her request, they removed her male look and endowed her with irresistible feminine charm. But this change would last only one year. She appeared in female attire before Arjuna. His determination to remain a celibate dissolved at once and they too merged. Arjuna fell in love with the illusion of Chitra as a glamorous lady. Her feminine charm is endowed by Madana and Vadana for only one year to attract Arjuna. Soon he overgrew this attachment to an illusion. He ended up with loving Chitra in spite of or because of her maleness. From this we can understand that Chitra's appearance as a charming lady is an illusion and her real self is maleness. Till now, we have seen the summary and analysis of the play Chitra written by Tagore in an elaborated way. Hope you would have understood it very clearly. Thanks for listening.